You know Nikola Tesla, right? Yeah. You know all the crazy, awesome bullshit he did in his life. Well, we're not talking about any of that today. We're talking about something far more stupid and fitting of this channel. <laughs> Nikola Tesla has contributed more to science than the bottle of wine Einstein's parents drunk on the night he was conceived. And lost amongst the countless pages discussing his various contributions to science is a hilarious tidbit about the time he set fire to butterflies for science. Yes, science! Nikola Tesla made countless contributions to the world of science. However, it's his work with electricity for which he is now best known. Although Nikola Tesla helped advance our understanding of energy and how to harness it for the betterment of mankind, he decided to lend his name to an invention that had an altogether less practical purpose. The Tesla coil. The Tesla coil, in its most basic sense, is a machine that creates artificial bolts of lightning. Why? Because how rad is this shit? As the inventor of the device, Nikola Tesla of course had a giant fucking Tesla coil that could apparently discharge bolts of lightning larger than Zeus's erection. Hercules would have a different film. <laughs> well, if, if Zeus actually had a bolt of lightning for a penis. During one experiment involving this machine at his lab in Colorado Springs, Tesla managed to create an artificial bolt of lightning over 135 feet long. The resulting crack of the electricity tearing through the atmosphere was so loud it was heard up to 15 miles away. The bolt of lightning produced was so powerful it caused the air itself around the lab and from many hundreds of feet outwards to become electrified, and residents of a nearby town noticed some quite curious phenomenon as a result. So what were these phenomena? Um, well, according to eyewitness accounts from the time, some of the things that people observed when the air was becoming electrified were taps that shot out sparks when you touched them instead of water, floors that crackled when you stepped on them, and various white people reported spontaneously growing afros. Really? Now that last one's made up, but the other two were true. I just like that image. One of my favourite pictures is just when uh, people, like, people with really long hair just touch Van de Graaff generators and just, doo! It's like, yeah, the 80s are back. Do you remember hard glue? Oh, that hair gel that we had in the 90s when people want to spike the hair right up. Because everyone wants to look like Paul Phoenix, apparently. <laughs> hard glue. Hard glue. The glue that sets rock hard. By far the most unusual thing that happened that day, though, is what happened to the butterflies around Tesla's lab. Yeah, you said they set on fire. Not at first. At first, because they were confused with all the electricity going through the air, the butterflies actually just flew around in drunken, confused circles before spontaneously bursting into flames. Which I think we can all admit is pretty fucking metal. Like, flaming, exploding butterflies sounds like a kick-ass album. I'd buy that album, and I wouldn't even want to know it's by. Like, I'd just see the picture of just a butterfly exploding and go, hell yeah. I see it happening in, like, a metal music video. Oh yeah, they're in a butterfly garden. And then as like the drop happens, they just kick into the chorus and like the power chord comes in, all the butterflies just explode. <laughs> now you're probably thinking, like, flaming butterfly sounds awesome, so I'm going to make it even cooler. Because it wasn't regular fire, it was St. Elmo's fire. St. Elmo's fire is this like really weird, rare phenomenon that you barely ever see. It's like the same thing it calls like ball lightning, which is basically, it's the ball of plasma which is superheated air, so it's so hot that it just becomes the fourth state of matter. It goes beyond being a gas. It's become this nebulous new form of energy and matter that we're not even like sure what it is. And, they, and it was covering butterflies. Just butterflies swimming around, yeah, this is pretty fucking sick. So I'm gonna die, but you know what? Butterfly heaven, I'm gonna go in there and get all the butterfly poon. I'm gonna go find me some butterfly poon. Yeah, well this is the thing I'm expected to put down here because I don't think I can explain it as well, off with my third hand science knowledge. So it'd probably be a good thing to put down here what St. Elmo's fire actually is yeah. for all people at home curious. And then this is what was covering the butterflies while they were flying around in circles. So that would have been pretty fucking metal to see. Why is it called St. Elmo's fire? Uh, something to do with old boats. They believed it was a ghost, I think. I believe it was an old thing that sailors used to see on when the mass of ships, they'd catch fire. Yeah. During storms and stuff like that, when they went through like a particularly energised air, during like thunderstorms and things like that, they'd see like fire on top of their mass at the night. Again, down here, this covered butterflies outside Tesla's lab while he was sat in there, probably jerking himself off something fierce to the idea of creating the fourth state of matter with a giant machine named after himself. <laughs> Do you imagine though, like if you're a butterfly you're flying along, suddenly you just start going in a circle. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like your feelers can sense something in the air and you don't know what it is. But you're just swimming around and think, okay, I can deal with this. This is fine. I'm sure it'll wear off in a second, I'll figure it out. Before you even finish that thought, fire. Your world, your world is just a flame. Your entire existence is now fire. And it's like, okay, 
I'm okay with this. I'm, g I'm good with this being my last moment of existence. Just this ball of like flaming awesomeness, just flying in a circle. But everyone thinks, oh, a Tesla coil was something built to demonstrate what electricity is, and also it's it basically to him to show off. No, it was a butterfly killing machine. You go back in time, you're like, I want to the Tesla coil. He's like, Tesla coil? You mean the butterfly oh, destroyer? <laughs> the butterfly decimator. <laughs> and then you get, um, is it Buddy Edison? Thomas Edison. He's remembered for the father of the light bulb and all that other shit that he stole. When he should be remembered for killing that fucking elephant. Because he was so, like, pissing annoyed that Tesla's AC current was so much better than his DC current. He went around electrocuting animals to death. Look how dangerous it is. Look how dangerous this electricity is. Oh, wow. So if we're saying if we touch the thing that lightning's made of, we'll die. Wow, what a great discovery you've made, Mr. Greatest Inventor on Earth. Again, this is just a footnote in the life story, potentially one of the greatest scientific minds in human history. However, you have to admit, Flaming Butterflies is a pretty fucking amazing footnote. Oh yeah. I think that's the thing you'd want people to know about. That and his obsession with pigeons. Tesla had a weird obsession with pigeons. What part of pigeons? Just pigeons in general. As he go out and feed them and stuff. And he had a pet pigeon and he called it, I think this might be a direct quote, the most beautiful creature I've ever seen, which is weird. He wrote about it like it was a woman, which is kind of weird. So yeah, Tesla. Good for electricity, man, but obsessed with pigeons. There's also the great story. This is a good one. He had a debt. I think it was a debt or he'd been staying at a hotel for a while. He said, look, you need to fucking pay for this now. We know you're famous. We know you're Nikola Tesla, but you've got to pay this bill. Went, okay, what I'll do is this is a death ray. What? This is a death ray. You don't open this up. This is a secret. When I die, this will be worth a fucking fortune. You sell this to the government, you make all your money back. Went, okay. Took it. When he died, they opened it up and it was just a load of um, old computer parts and stuff. <laughs> just made it up and went, yeah, this is a death ray. The thing is though, if you, were, if you were like a scientific super genius, you'd probably do that. I'd do that. If people come into my thing, it's like, Right, Carl, you need to pay rent. I go, actually, instead of rent, how would you like this earthquake box? What's an earthquake box? Exactly what it sounds like. Press that button, cause an earthquake. Don't press it now. But you can have this. I can keep saying it. Yeah, I better take this earthquake machine. I'll save it. And it's just a fucking... <laughs> they open it up and it's just a sandwich. It's like, oh, come on. Right, I think it was like either his, um, his rent or an overdue bill or a debt. He paid it with a box and he said it was a death ray or like a death machine or something like that. And they opened it up and it was just an old bunch of like wires and shit that he had around, lying around his office. Really funny, like, if it was actually a death ray. Someone, oh yeah, cleaner actually knocked it off a shelf. Well, not this box is, knocks it, it's a big shatter, pulls it back on the shelf and just pushes it back and goes, I'm sure no one will notice. <laughs> when I do like, comment, subscribe, because we've got this green screen, we've been dicking around with that a lot. Can you make it so just thunder and lightning's behind me the entire time? And can you end it with a huge lightning crash? as I do an evil laugh. Yes. Awesome. All right, let's do this. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, leave a like or a comment below. Or subscribe for more content like this. <laughs> Is that good? That was a psycho laugh. That's good. That's the take we're using. <laughs> we did a hundred takes and that was the best one. Make it work. You're a miracle worker, brought our faith in you.